On Thursday, December 15, 2011, at the New River Inn in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the Fort Lauderdale Historical Society hosted a World War II memory sharing event that brought together both military veterans and civilians to share their unique experiences from one of the most tumultuous and world-changing periods in human history. This remarkable group of individuals, ranging from decorated military officers to the civilians who had to endure the rationing and constant threat of attack that was so commonplace in the era, gathered for an hour-long discussion about their parts in what would become the defining conflict of the 20th century. Their unique insights, told not through the well-documented strategies of generals and world leaders, but through the lens of the individual soldier or civilian, offered a living history lesson about the struggles and shared sacrifice of living in wartime. The host of this event was veteran Wynn Castile. He was joined by special guest and fellow veteran Frank Lacanto, host of County Line on Beacon TV, who was gracious enough to sing the national anthem for this gathering. O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. <laughs> Mr. Lacanto went on to share how the war impacted his life. Like I say, I've been on microphones all of my life. I have my television program, but this is too human. During the war, I was drafted. I had already started in show business as a young teenager, 15. I'd worked a few years, was doing the nightclubs and all that, the honky tonks of Boston, when I was drafted at 21, and uh, took my four months basic at Fort Dix, infantry basic. I was a temporary sergeant on, at that time. I don't know why I told my first sergeant, I've never even seen a gun. Oh, you'll do all right, Lacanto. So he put me in charge of the third platoon there in basic. Fortunately, I was taken out of the infantry. I didn't think that would happen. None of my buddies did. But I was in a, a GI uh, entertainment outfit. And I spent a year and a half. And we entertained the troops. That's what we did. I thank God that every night we could get off of those hills while the other boys were all in blackface going out into no man's land, and some of them never returning. Later, the veterans shared their stories from the war. So this is how I got into college, World War II started. And I, all my life, I wanted to fly. When I was a child in Pennsylvania, in the coal mining area, I read everything I could about the flyers in World War I. And I remember my dad, I'd be sitting downstairs with a flashlight reading, and he would say, get your you know up there. <laughs> and there I was. That's how far back I got, I wanted to fly. And I did. Yeah, I flew with the B-25s during World War II. I flew 52 bomber missions. Uh, I, went, I intended actually come down here to Eglin Air Force Base where I trained to drop torpedoes. And before I know it, the war was over. What happened after World War II, I was back, I was started college, Penn State, <laughs> and I was recalled. So I decided to make a career of it. So I have 22 years military career, of my career, 22 years of military. I love the service, and I still do, and I love the country. When Pearl Harbor was bombed, I was only 16, so as soon as I turned 17, I joined the Navy. I thought I was going to get killed right away because on convoy duty, but here I am today, 86, and still going. Good. The ship I was on finally arrived in Port Everglades, and I fell in love with Fort Lauderdale. And the one thing I've done that I'm proud of is I saved one building on the old Naval Air Station. We have a Navy museum there. Yeah. And Dr. John Bloom has been one of my greatest helpers putting that museum together. Right after the war started on December the 7th, I, I enlisted in the Navy, apprenticed as a parachute rigger. Eventually, I was sent to parachute school in uh, Lakehurst, New Jersey, a blimp base. Uh, I must have been 200. Uh, students, marines, waves, and sailors, learning the art of packing a parachute. I had to pack a parachute for myself, go up in a blimp with my class, 
and at 2,000 feet only, free fall or jump. Uh, then you could pack a parachute for the Navy. Uh, eventually, I got into uh, assigned to a squadron, a torpedo squadron, the Avenger. And to my surprise, I didn't know who he was at the time, but eventually I found out that I was flying with George Bush. This country was never united, like in World War II. Afterwards, civilians who lived in Fort Lauderdale during the war shared their experiences. My grandmother was an air warden. She, read, she made sure everybody on 6th Avenue, where this house is located, had um, their blinds down. And my cousin has her whistle that she went around the neighborhood with this whistle in, whistle in to, to uh, get everybody, um, make sure they were blacked out. And my father was too old for service, so he was an air warden too. And we, we as far as Sailboat Bend, had to be blacked out. And in that picture are seven members of my family that served in World War II. And they all came back. My dad had a hotel at the beach in 1940, and uh, when they took over the Lario Beach Hotel and, and, the, uh, and the trade winds for a radar school, uh, my dad had one of the only bars out at the beach because he, <laughs> he had a liquor license. We, uh, uh, from time to time, I was only a little kid, so you ask about seeing the, the, the enemy out on the coast. Well, we didn't see the enemy because there were submarines, that, but they were sinking our ships off the coast, and every once in a while one would uh, blow up and the tankers would, you, you could see the, you know, the fires and so forth. We could see boats drifting out the ocean out here at times. They've been torpedoed, and we had to keep all of our east side of our houses and buildings all dark and closed. And you even took your lens on your car, and you had to paint it with just a small open area. Yeah, I was unfortunate, or maybe fortunate, I did not serve in the service. I'm like you, I was too young. <laughs> in fact, I did go for a fence call, I was being drafted after the war was over. The draft lasted for a while. But I've been in football practice, and a big fat in had fallen on top of me and pushed my nose back and cracked it and smudged it. The next day, I was at a physical in Fort Bragg in uh, North Carolina, and the doctor said, "I have to turn you down now. You're gonna have to come next time." He said, "Did you do this on purpose?" <laughs> I uh, had a newspaper ride in the early '40s, but getting back to the D-Day. Of December the 7th. We both had had newspaper routes at that time. We came out and everybody was selling extras announcing what happened at Pearl Harbor. So we went down to the circulation department and checked out some newspapers to sell and we asked what do we charge for them? He says nothing. Everything you sell is yours. So Gene and I with about a couple of hundred other people selling newspapers on the street for the next two or three hours. It was interesting to me because never having known anything about war because none of, I had an uncle who went in World War I, but not knowing anything about war and seeing how the community got together so fast. We also had a chance to speak to Patrick Regis, co-owner of Los Olas Art and Antiques, about some of the World War II relics he brought to show at the event and why he's so passionate about military history. Myself and Sean Mazzarella are business partners, and we have a little store on Las Olas Boulevards and uh, love history and love military history. For this function, we brought examples of World War II uniforms from, this was a Pacific Tarawa, Tarawa Marine Corps uniform and helmet. This is World War II Army Air Corps B-51 pilot. This is an example of a naval nurse, a seersucker uniform. And then we have examples of the uh, Japanese helmet, World War II from the Pacific Theater, German helmet from the European Theater, and America from both theaters. Just a little sampling of some of the uh, uniforms and equipment that was used in World War II by the different services. If you want to learn more about the Fort Lauderdale History Center or our historical events, please visit us at www.fortlauderdalehistorycenter.org.
Thanks for watching.